Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part 3 for this news report today. It's Friday, November 9th, 2012, and I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com if you'd like to help with donations. Also on YouTube, my channel is ddarko2012 and on YouTube, ddarko2013. As I always say, the headlines and links that I'm covering here will be in YouTube's video description. I've kind of slowed it down today and I've well, I just wanted to be able to talk about things that I haven't got to talk about recently so I'm sorry if I'm not like blasting through articles like I usually do but um, all right so we covered the FEMA camps I mean that's basically what it is these people can't leave out there in, uh, in New England area New Jersey New York and that and they're not allowed to leave uh, these guys are trying p plugging something in and the cops come in there and unplug it uh, they said it's like a prison so they got black helicopters flying overhead. They're fenced in. I mean, Jesus, dude. Officials want military to take over power restoration on Long Island. They kind of already have with the Air Force going over there, kind of like they did in Haiti. Uh, some officials are calling for the U.S. military to take over managerial structure of the Long Island Power Authority until power is restored on Long Island, where more than 150,000 homes and businesses are still in dark after Sandy and the snowstorm. So most of you are aware that it is, um, it's been around for a while. I mean, there was an executive order that was written, National Emergency Act or something like that, um, where they can take over, you know, all the uh, utilities and stuff like that. Uh, but they could do that during World War II, so it's not anything new. The recently re-elected Hugo Chavez of Venezuela urges Obama to stop U.S. Uh, hegemony. He has called on the U.S. counterpart Barack Obama to put an end to the Washington's policy of invading and destabilizing other countries. He pointed out that Obama should forget about invading other nations, uh, destabilizing countries. He described the U.S. as socially and economically fractured and, and called on Obama to focus on governing his own country instead. Chavez, who was making the remarks in reaction to Obama's re-election, said the American super elite exploits the rest of the U.S. and manipulates it through the media. From November 4, 2012, Ecuador, a Chilean journalist reports CIA in operation to prevent Correa's re-election. According to the Chilean journalist, the CIA has prepared an operation to destabilize the regime. Correa said, you have to be very attentive to these complaints that point to avoid another a fall to the ground of the oligarchy and the empire of the U.S. by the recent re-election of Hugo Chavez. Recalled a week ago, the complaint that was met with British former Ambassador Craig Murray, who warned that the CIA will invest more than $80 million to try that Korea is not re-elected in the elections of February. Goes on, it says that according to the Ecuadorian president, the money would go to buy journalists making a fuss to destabilize the government of Korea and prevent his re-election. He said another complaint in the same tone appeared this week when the Chilean journalist Mary Bell warned of an alleged international plot to destabilize the government of Ecuador and restore U.S. hegemony in the region. So there you go. <laughs> Mexican diplomat says America pretty much invited the Sinola drug cartel across the border. That's right, they're siding with them, taking down the Zetas and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, with the recent marijuana bills being passed, it doesn't mean anything. Even though the Latin American countries, South America and Central America countries, want to legalize marijuana, um, they want to, and, and they want to... Uh, basically go that direction. The U.S., on the other hand, doesn't want that, and they will. Uh, they like the drug war because the, 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 the Mexico and those countries, they know how much violence and, and, and just um, bloodshed that is carried out in the name of war on drugs. But the U.S., it's all about squash and competition, and that's what they have their own little... Um, they have their own little uh, business operation going down, uh, going on down there, which is usually um, all that all that revenue is funneled to U.S. banks, and uh, it goes, of course, to what to fund black ops and uh, black uh, budgets for the intelligence operations, which further destabilize countries to go in there and take the resources. Argentines flood the streets of protest against President Cristina Fernandez. Brandishing banners and banging on pots and pans, thousands of Argentines take to the streets of Buenos Aires to protest against the president. Do you guys know uh, what the pots and pans means? I guess it's to ward off evil spirits. That's why they do that. But it's just a nice little saying to bang their pots and pans. In other words, it's you know you're not going to really do much. 
That's pretty much what Americans just did with the recent election. But the point here is it's a color revolution, right? So you have this running through the telegraph, and they're promoting this. Color revolutions, Ar Argentina next. Suspicion grows as Western criticism of Argentina's nationalization rebuffing of rules of global finance sharpens in tandem with street protest. Western media agencies have begun enthusiastically covering demonstrations in Argentina's capital. And the, all of the mainstream media, including BBC, have all covered the protests in equally vague terms, failing to identify the leaders and opposition groups behind them, while the BBC in particular recycled Arab Spring rhetoric, claiming that opposition activists used social networks to mobilize the march, which they said was one of the biggest anti-government protests in a decade. They say they're angry over rising inflation, high levels of crime and corruption, all identical grievances brought into the streets by Wall Street back opposition groups in Venezuela. Underneath these unsubstantiated uh, claims lies the IMF and threats of sanctions aimed at Argentina turning away from the U.S. dollar and Wall Street London dominated international financial order. Apparently, this Robert Kagan in 1997 was quoted as saying the present world order serves the needs of the United States and its allies, which constructed it. And the UK, they're just going at it with Mali, and they're heading up the Syrian thing. And now look at with Argentina, drastic changes in UK forces, territorial army will be deployed in the Falklands. The U.S. Defense Secretary signaled Thursday morning that members of the territorial army will be deployed to the Falkland Islands. Addressing the House of Commons, the Secretary Hammond said that reserve forces will be expected to fulfill new roles, including contributing standing commitments such as the Falklands. They want to double the size of the Territory Army to 30,000 and rename it to the Army Reserves. The regular Army is being cut by 20 to 82,000. Russia is eager to see Obama's promised flexibility on missile defense. Obama told Russians no deal was possible until after a vote. Remember that back in March when Obama caused a minor stir when he was caught in a private conversation with uh, Russia's then president, Dmitry Medvedev, on a live microphone pleading for the Russians to stop talking about the missile defense shield dispute until after the election. This is my last election, Obama was caught saying. After my election, I have more flexibility. Medvedev, also unaware he was being recorded, told Obama he would take the message to current president uh, Vladimir Putin. Next up, Obama victory infuriates Pakistani drone victims. So we're talking about U.S. hegemony. The roars celebrating the re-election of U.S. President Obama on television give this individual a searing headache as years of grief and anger come rushing back. He accuses the president of robbing him of his father, three brothers, and a nephew, all killed in U.S. drone aircraft attack a month after Obama first took office. Actually, within 24 hours after he was re-elected, he actually hit a, a, a drone strike. There was actually a drone strike in Yemen. Yemenis hold huge anti-U.S. rally in Sana over drone attacks. Thousands have taken to the streets and the capital to protest against the deadly U.S. assassination drone attacks in their country. Also, the American interference in their country's internal affairs. I mean, they have a lot going on over there. Marines, tanks, uh, funding their forces, um, just a small quiet buildup like in Somalia as well so there's something with the Gulf of Aden uh, and a lot of gas a lot of Western uh, natural gas they're trying to push now the Cyprus to Leviathan uh, pipeline uh, also you have the Ukraine doing deals with the West instead of just Russia so they're trying to maintain that world order and they want shipping lanes and that's what that's for as well election mandate in hand Obama readies more Iran sanctions only days after he won re-election, the U.S. rolled out a new round of sanctions against Iran and accused it of attempting to shoot down an American drone in international airspace. U.S. Department uh, spokesmen said they are responsible for abuses carried out against their own citizens. Hmm, interesting. What is that? Uh, what's that saying? The pot calling the kettle black? It says the alleged abuses include jamming of international satellite broadcasts, blocking internet access to services like YouTube, and monitoring online activities to identify users who publish material insulting government officials, the U.S. Uh, Treasury Secretary said. Dude, people in the U.S. are getting arrested, and in Europe for uh, tweets and stuff on Facebook. Uh, you had what Marines? Uh, you had a Marine who was critical of the government, and he was thrown in a psych ward. Um, also, what do you have? Actually, this didn't even get covered. The EU was uh, blocking Press TV's access to their satellite. 
They were jamming their satellite, cut them off their feed in Europe, press TV, Iran's uh, media. So this is great. And detaining journalists. I'm not saying they're not doing it. I'm just saying that the U.S. is totally guilty of doing it. And it's escalated under Obama, which is a uh, journalist. Uh, it's basically a witch hunt against anyone that speaks out. So actually, I so remember this. Iran sanctions stoke anti-U.S. sentiment. They're, they're actually making Iran more united. And if they attack them, they'll make them even more united. These sanctions are really hurting these people, especially uh, especially the, the poor or the middle class and that. So, Iran issues a warning for America after attacking spy drone, says the defenders of the Islamic Republic will respond decisively to any form of encroachment by air, sea, or on the ground. So what's interesting, like the whole Petraeus thing uh, stepping down after the elections, you have what? This actually happened, this whole thing about shooting at the jet actually happened a week ago. So it didn't just happen. If any foreign aircraft attempts to enter airspace, our armed forces will deal with them, says Iran. And what's interesting is that they supposedly shot at it and missed it. But what about that drone that was uh, supposedly uh, brought down electronically? Remember that, uh, that they reverse engineered that was basically handed to them on a platter? I mean, what did the U.S. do? The West, they just land a drone inside Iran for them and say, here, here you go. And then uh, when they strike Israel, they'll blame it on Hezbollah from Lebanon, like I was saying, and it'll tie back to Iran. Whatever it takes, right? Iran's Ahmadinejad says anyone stockpiling atom bombs is retarded. So I think this is probably the most misquoted individual in history. Uh, you know, talk about he wants to wipe Israel off the map. So they're talking about atom bombs. So, but he goes on and he says that... Uh, that Thursday, the age of nuclear deterrence was long gone, and any country still stockpiling nuclear weapons was mentally retarded. So I'm not sure if that's what he actually said in his translation, but he goes on. He says the bombs are not any more helpful than those who are stockpiling nuclear weapons. Politically, they are backward, and they are mentally retarded. The Iranian nation is not seeking an atom bomb, nor do they need to build an atomic bomb. For defending ourselves, we do not need a nuclear weapon. I actually wonder if he's talking about something else, whether it's weather weapons, whether it's lasers, uh, whatever. You know what I mean? Some really crazy stuff. Uh, because I've thought about that before, the nuclear weapons. I think that's kind of archaic. But it is interesting because they're telling them that they can't have it. Everybody can defend themselves um, except for people with central banks, countries with central banks that are sovereign nations. Stuxnet uh, goes out of control. Chevron is infected by anti-Iranian virus, and others could be next. So it's, it's a result of America's cyber war. They're already seeing collateral, collateral damage. And supposedly that originated out of Israel. Miramar, Miramar fighter jets deployed in secret to the Mideast. So this kind of news. Unannounced marine tour comes amid tensions over Iranian nuclear program. So, yeah, this is what I used to work with. Uh, VMFA-224, the Fighting Bengals, right, out of South Carolina. This is out of California. It says amount concerns over Iran's nuclear program and violence elsewhere. U.S. Central Command quietly dispatched Marine fighter jet squadrons from San Diego to an undisclosed country in the Middle East. A BS excuse. The deployment fouls threats by the U.S. and Israel of military strikes if needed to prevent Iran from developing a nuclear weapon. So like I said, it's getting, it's getting pretty hot. You know, it's getting hot in the kitchen, man. I mean, these bastards are really cooking something up. And I can tell by all the news I've been covering. So at the same time, the regime change in Syria that's not working is threatening to drag Lebanon, of course. You know, Lebanon's pretty close with uh, Syria. And also Turkey, who's actually heading up uh, the invasion of Syria. And, of course, Jordan into a war. Iraq is beset by renewed violence because they're trying to assert their sovereignty <laughs> and terrorist groups hoping to capitalize. That's the Western-backed terrorist groups are hoping to capitalize on political upheaval, upheaval in the region to covet serious chemical weapons. So there you go. See, linked to Hezbollah and Iran and Libyan arms, which was the result of the regime change, which is the same result of what's happening in Mali right now. <laughs> it's just the insanity, dude. But people are naive. Most, you know, most Americans are naive. They don't know the history, so they don't know what's going on. So they believe it. World oil users will be left high and dry if Iran seals off the Hormuz water passage. And U.S. Uh, oil production has increased uh, the most in history right now. Strategic oil reserves will need will be needed if Iran seeks to close the strait. A U.S. initiative to set up Syrian Opposition Council collapses. One day before the official start of the conference, opposition leaders selected by the U.S. began to drop out. 
there are too many people against this initiative for it to work now. They want to give the terrorists representation. They want to make a moderate country into an Islamic theocracy. Syria, leader of rebels, warned they might turn into terrorists. Well, you think? This is GGN. Thank you.